hopefully you guys can hear me. I got the windows down, but I'm in the Cobra and the Shelby's in front of me. But I want to take this time to, first of all, enjoy the car for the ride we're on and talk to you guys a little bit about the Cobra because I don't have any videos of me actually driving the Cobra and talking to you guys. So what's new with the Cobra is it actually got ceramic coated. I mentioned it in my I think two videos ago by the time this video goes up, I mentioned that this car is getting ceramic coated. So essentially what that does is it protects the paint. So it keeps it looking fresh and clean. You guys can kind of see maybe on the mirror, if you can see or the hood. It's really shiny, so it's a protective coating on top of the paint. And because this car doesn't see a lot of weather, it should last a lifetime of that car. And he came down and did it right at our house. His name's Kenyon. He's the guy who uh, actually hooked me up with filming that FAF uh, a couple weeks ago now. This is the cleanest black paint I've ever seen on a car. It looks brand new. And the car definitely deserves it. Especially, it only has 32,000 kilometers on it. Like, So anyways, I'm going to talk a little bit about driving the Cobra because I've never talked about it really. So, this car has 390 brake horsepower as advertised. However, when these came out, people started putting them on the dyno and realized that these are putting down about 420 horsepower to the wheel. So obviously Ford underestimated, uh, or under, what would that call? What would be called? Underrated? Ford underrated the horsepower on this car, I guess for insurance purposes or whatever, which is a rare thing for people to do now. Actually, it's quite the other way around. At least it has been over the last, I'd say, eight years where companies actually inflate the numbers of horsepower. But this car has more horsepower than advertised. And I believe this competed with the C506 at its time. And obviously these cars are very sought after and they have that iconic supercharger line from the Eaton up front on top of the engine. But you don't you can't hear a whole lot of inside the car much like the hellcats where you can hear supercharger wine if you're within a 50,000 mile radius of it uh this car is not quite like that but when you're in front of the car you can you know it's supercharged you know it's a cobra and just cruising here 60 kilometers an hour which is about 40 miles an hour and i know i shouldn't do this but it's in sixth gear about thousand rpm and it's just idling its way calm feels like an ordinary mustang like this car is perfect the horsepower amount uh the ride quality which we'd like to get lowering springs for it or like, well full-on suspension not lowering springs but you get what i'm saying drop it a little bit make it more sporty looking i've driven this car since i was 17 years old uh, it's actually the car I learned the manual on, if you don't know about that, I have a video of it, so be sure to check that out. But the point I'm getting at there is, I mean, it's a lot of, it's too much horsepower for a 17 year old, I'll be in. But now, being a little bit more experienced, I've driven the Shelby and, you know, I have to respect the power, I, I'm not an idiot, entirely. And when you respect the power, the car will respect you. Uh, when bugs end up on the paint, like I said, it's a uh, protective coating, so essentially you can wipe off the bugs and then put a little polish on, polish off the mess it left onto the paint, and it's as if it was never there. No, no water, no nothing, it just falls right off. This car was a little dusty when I pulled it out, the dust is now gone. Like, it's a very worthy investment. The real question is not if you should do it, but on what you should do it on. If you're going to sell your car in a couple years and you drive it every day, it's a truck, um, and you don't really care much for it, then I would say don't do it. There's no point. But if you care about your paint, you have a sports car, or even a truck that you really care about and you want to have it for a long time, ceramic coat it. Ceramic coating is fantastic. I never knew much about it, still really don't, uh, but it's on this car, and uh, from what I see, right in front of my eyes, it, it's amazing. The exhaust is very burbly. Uh, the car came with the Flowmaster exhaust. Um, I think it was an uh, axle back. But it's a very burbly exhaust. It's not very loud, not a lot of volume, especially at idle, but it's very burbly. If you respect the power, the car will respect you. And that's why you see a lot of people taking their Mustangs and crashing it. Uh, leaving car shows and whatever it's you know you gotta you gotta 
horse bike to power. You're getting 420 horsepower out of a Mustang GT and then dumping the clutch, leaving the car show for your first time doing it, right? You're gonna crash, <laughs> unless you're, you have experience with it. Anybody wondering when the uh, RPMs hit 2500? Uh, well, yeah, right there on acceleration, the shift up light. That's a common problem thing on the Cobras for some reason. It always wants to upshift. Uh, it's really down low. I, I don't know why. I have no idea why that's the case. I haven't looked into a fix, but I've seen other Cobra owners actually post about it, so I know it's a common thing. Uh, as, uh, if anyone's wondering, uh, yeah, it's not. Um, it's not adjustable, it just kind of does its own thing. See, if I listen to it all the time, it wouldn't, uh, maybe, it's for fuel economy, maybe. Just go a thousand RPMs everywhere you go. I hope you enjoyed this POV drive of the Cobra. Uh, changing up a little bit, a little slower paced, but I figured it'd make for a cool video, so here we are. Uh, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to see more of the Mustangs and the truck build I have going on and other fun stuff. Leave a like on the video, drop down a comment on what you want to see on the channel, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.